The largest modern land predator is arguably the polar bear, which tops out at close to 800 kilograms. They eat almost exclusively meat, dining on seals all year long, and will also scavenge walruses and whales when given the chance. Meanwhile, the Mesozoic gave us the biggest terrestrial hunters we know of in theropod dinosaurs, with the most massive species averaging over 8 tons. Why is there such a dramatic difference? Everyone who's heard the word paleontology knows that prehistoric animals are famous for their incredible size. Not every prehistoric analog for modern animals is larger. Whales and horses are much bigger now, for example, but there is a general trend that if there's a modern animal, there was probably a prehistoric analog that was bigger. While there is a wealth of physically intimidating and supremely well-adapted carnivores alive today, from big cats to bears to monitor lizards, none of them come close to the theropods when it comes to sheer size. They already dwarfed polar bears by the Jurassic, which hosted megatheropods like Saurophaganax that could have pushed 6 or even 7 tons, and they just kept widening the gap in the Cretaceous. African and South American carcrodontosaurids had multiple genera that were above 7 tons, with Giga potentially hitting 10. T-Rex specimens like Cope and Bertha were comfortably in the 11 to 12 ton range. But why would they need to be over a dozen times heavier than a polar bear? Let's get the how out of the way. We know that theropods had varying growth rates, with Mapusaurus representing the fast and furious end of things while Spinosaurus was glacial in comparison. They both grew to be huge, but didn't use the same strategy. Large body size is a costly adaptation, since it comes with a huge metabolic demand. If an animal is big, it's because there is a selective pressure in its environment that's causing larger individuals to be more successful, gradually increasing body size over time. These pressures can range from thermoregulation in cold environments, to sexual selection, to predator-prey arms races. Polar bears may represent a combination of all three. They live in freezing areas, the males are twice the size of the females, and they hunt large-bodied seals that require significant muscle power to capture. Big theropods lived all over the globe, but the world was much warmer than today. There is some evidence that living in colder areas could be associated with large body size in theropods. Nanooksaurus, for example, lived in the northern extremes of Cretaceous North America and was about 8 meters long, but the biggest were closer to the equator. We'll set that a factor aside given the Mesozoic climate. What about sexual selection? In some modern species, large body size in one sex is associated with reproductive success. Elephant seals represent an extreme of this principle. If the males are big and strong enough to fight off rivals, they're far more likely to pass along their genetics, which makes the next generation of males even bigger. While it's certainly possible that this type of selection occurred in theropods, we don't have nearly enough data to tell if size-based sexual dimorphism was even a thing. As far as I'm aware, the only confirmed female megatheropod was a Tyrannosaurus specimen named B. rex, identified based on the deposition of medullary bone in its pelvic region. We know even less about other theropods, making this hypothesis untestable for now. The most likely explanation for the extraordinary size of theropods as predators is the extraordinary size and power of their prey. Co-evolutionary arms races are well documented in modern species, and more facets of biology than size alone. Bats use sonar to track moths, which have developed not only ways to detect the bats, but also to generate ultrasonic clicks of their own which repel their would-be hunters. Rough-skinned newts produce powerful detrototoxins, and red-sided garter snakes have developed resistance to those toxins so they can successfully eat them. Let's take a look at Carcrodontosaurids as an example. They were elephant-sized hunters with sharp, curved teeth designed for slicing and inflicting maximum blood loss by severing arteries and tearing flesh. Their arms were long and powerful with strong claws. While they weren't as adapted for speed as tyrannosaurs, they didn't need to be. They had evolved to be successful predators of the slow and massive sauropod dinosaurs. You're not going to be able to hunt a 30-ton animal without a slew of adaptations specifically selected for that purpose. The fossil record of Carcrodontosaurids begins in the Jurassic with the 10-meter Viteropristosaurus, which lived alongside sauropods like Australodocus, Decreosaurus, Giraffatitan, Tendagoria, and a handful of others, with size ranges from 4 to over 40 tons. The lineage continued evolving huge body size alongside more sauropods on other continents, like Acrocanthosaurus with Astrodon and Sauroposidon. Carcrodontosaurus lived with Paralotitan, Egyptosaurus, and Robachosaurus. South America gave us Tyranotitan, Mapusaurus, and the Giga, with too many giant titanosaurs to list here. Carcrodontosaurids got big because the prey around them was big. Really, really big. A predator is likely to become bigger over time if the optimal foraging strategy involves hunting bigger animals. Otherwise, it's going to stay relatively small. In the case of theropods, they co-evolved with the early branches of sauropods and ornithischians, so the race began in the Triassic and reached its peak in the Cretaceous. A slightly different principle applies to tyrannosaurs. 
The biggest Asian species, like Zhusheng Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus, lived alongside giant hadrosaurs like Shantungosaurus, as well as a handful of titanosaurs. They represented a morphological intermediate between the lean and fast Alluramines and the most extreme Tyrannosaurines. Perhaps they dabbled in multiple prey types, from hadrosaurs to smaller sauropods. In North America, we see a gradual increase in size and robusticity, from Lithronax with Centrosaurines and Hadrosaurs, to Teratophonius with Centrosaurines, Hadrosaurs, and Ankylosaurids, all the way to Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus hunted gigantic ceratopsians like Triceratops, possibly Ankylosaurs, and huge Hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus, which ranged from 5 to 11 tons. In any theropod lineage, you can see the prey in its environment that forced them to adapt as a species. In the case of the gigantic groups, they evolved alongside and may have influenced the rise of the biggest and most heavily armed land herbivores in history. There's nothing as cool as these evolutionary rivals, and the battles between theropods and their equally extraordinary prey will forever be legendary. Thanks for watching! Join the Vividend Discord server with the link in the description and check out my other videos if you're interested in paleontology. We'd love to have you join the channel to receive unique emojis, loyalty badges, and shoutouts. If you're a Theropod fan, share this video with your friends. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.